Hello, and welcome to 3D Experience Forum. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research. And we're talking to business leaders about digital transformation and finding opportunities for growth during turbulent times. Today, I'll be speaking with Elizabeth Gritch, one of the co-founders of RKS. Elizabeth, thanks for joining me. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be part of this 3DX Forum 2021. Yeah, it's great. And hopefully in a not too distant future, we'll be doing these forums in the same place. However, part of that uh, challenging times, turbulent times that I mentioned in the yep. introduction are the exact reason why we're still doing this over Zoom. But uh, before we dive into some of the questions uh, more specific about the technology and the disruption and, and, and the selections of different platforms and software, just give us a little bit about your professional experience and what led you to being part of finding RKS? So my background is from the automotive industry. I'm from Europe. I grew up with the products around BMW and Peugeot and French products like the Soul Systems is uh, Ferrari, Audi, you name all the big brands. So I'm coming from that industry, came in the US and met my husband and partner we are both from the automotive, he's as well there. And so we founded RKS of Road because we also have a love for the recreation industry. We have been um, in that industry for a couple of years now. And we saw there is actually a gap when it comes to quality and craftsmanship, as well as technology and features. And that's how we started RKS of Road. Well, you started the business, I believe you said in 2019. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you really did start at a very interesting time. So the first part of you know 2019 and into the end of the year, everything was moving normal. And then it had to have been literally the first month or two of the second year in business, the pandemic hit. So you you guys are really a pretty new company still. And this pandemic has actually been around for the vast majority of your existence. Now, yeah. the off-road uh, recreational industry actually somewhat flourished during this uh, period of time. And it, I think it drove additional interest, but had to have been a very, very interesting time to be starting a company. Talk a little bit about you know, how you evolved from what you thought the business was going to be in 2019 to what you actually had to do with the pandemic and the impact that it's had on travel, mobility, shopping, uh, financials, and everything else. Yeah, it was. we started to be incorporated in October 19. We just had started to get the mule completed. We had our first lessons learned on the mule bill. We started literally building up the frame and the box, so to speak, of the trailer when the pandemic hit. And that was just a, oh my God, good timing, <laughs> really. So you can do a lot of stuff online and remotely with all the engineering and marketing and that stuff. But building up a physical prototype remotely is kind of challenging. So that did set us back and that was a struggle to overcome and thank God then it loosened up a little bit and we could get people back into the building with of course the security and measurement and all that stuff but the challenges are still there and were there last year so being a startup we are challenging the industry as is and then just you know working through supply chain issues and making sure we are getting our parts and Interesting enough, and a lot of other people are struggling with that too, is just hiring people. I mean, through the pandemic, getting resources, be it part or people, was a huge challenge. So yeah, not only did we struggle with the normal startup challenges, but the pandemic struggles as well. So it did force us to think differently right off the bat. And it's good, clearly. We came up with a lot of new ideas, but it wasn't easy. By no means. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I had to imagine. I, I'm just listening, thinking, wow, you were not even three or four months old when this really yeah. started to become news. And I was thinking about the, you know, people's concerns about finances that hit early on being a difficult scenario for you. You brought up a great point, though, talking about issues that are still lingering, like supply chain, right. of course, has been devastating to the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. I see pictures float across uh, different social streams still of 
you know, massive parking lots full of pickup trucks that are waiting on one $3 semiconductor chip to be able to be completed right. so they can, you know, so, and these are big companies with massive operational yeah. support, buying power, they can't get what they need. Being new, that had to have created a whole bunch of strain, but being new, being a startup also means being innovative, being willing to disrupt the way you do things, um, you know, and of course having that fire to do whatever it takes to, to protect your, yes. your business. And I imagine there was a lot of reasons to start partnering with a company like Dassault with what you're building and what you're designing, but it had to have been even more timely to have that cloud-based approach, right? I mean, so let's start with the first part. What drove the partnership with Dassault System? Like I said, I've been from the automotive industries and I've always been in touch or connected with Cadia and the Dassault product. So when it came then to choose a system for us, I called my contact at Dassault System and first offended him by asking for a different product. And then he really said, hey, listen, we have a really good solution for startups. Look into 3DX, the startup bundle. And I do love 3DX, I really do. I think it's such a great platform with so much capabilities. And when he offered me that deal, I said, oh man, this is exactly what I needed. A neighbor product to start with, a really good pricing. And then I can just grow with me as we grow with the product and the organization. And for me, it's the best VLAM system right now out there. So having a technology product and technology in the organization, it's for me key. You gotta be consistent with the message. You can't have a high-end product and you're literally drawing with your drawing board, right? It just doesn't go together. So whatever you sell, you should actually live yourself. And this was then yeah, no brainer to just go with 3DX and also. Yeah, it's a, the trusted name uh, for yeah. so many companies in this space. I was listening to your story and you were kind of backing into some of those challenges. And one of the big challenges a lot of the firms had when engineering and, and different parts of the organization got put into, um, you know, work from home or remote mm -hmm. work, uh, teams weren't meeting. Uh, engineering leaderships weren't able to get in the same room and uh, right. whiteboard or, mm -hmm. you know, so this actually opened up a pretty big door, a big, pretty big value opportunity for DSO and for companies like yours. And of course, all your peers and competitors right. to be able to use a system like this to say, Hey, we may not be in the same room, but we can continue to design together, visualize together, and develop products and share these with our customers. I have to imagine right. having a cloud-based tool like that became even more important than you may have expected when you first went down the path. It is, and it was. So just sharing the content nicely and conveniently was key. The other good thing is, as a startup, I mean, I do not have the funds and resources for a big data center. So having everything on the cloud or somebody else is really managing all the cloud infrastructure that was super convenient for me and good, right? So from an organizational perspective, having the ability to be remotely connected, working on one tool together, one product together, and yet not being bogged down with a heavy, expensive infrastructure, it's just what you need to really progress forward. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting because you actually, I, I was thinking a lot about the ability to, you know, have multi-tenancy and different engineers you know, accessing files concurrently and seeing the same files at the mm -hmm. same time so that you can work in a design space without disruption, despite the fact that, you know, historically, a lot of times these folks may have all been in the same space together. Now, right. as you return to that, you start to extract even more collaborative value, but when you couldn't do that, it was even hard. But you mentioned something that was also very poignant for a new company, a startup, and that comes back to cloud meaning economic value, cloud meaning, mm -hmm. you know, and, and of course, as you get very large, the economics change, but in the beginning, the ability to consume as much as you need and only as much as you need really right. pr provides you some flexibility in how you invest limited resources as you're building your business. Right. I mean, just having, again, a heavy infrastructure, somewhere a server room with heavy AC to make sure you're not burning down the building. I mean, <laughs> then you need someone actually managing or that this is 
as a startup, I mean, uh, no. Plus, to be honest, I mean, this cloud solution from the so always gives me the latest version. So I never have to worry about, okay, I need to now upgrade this version and I need to make sure that this version is running. So they manage everything for me and I just utilize really the system without having to worry about all the little things in the background. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So you are, um, you're sitting out, standing out in front of one of your vehicles or your, 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 your off-road. Um, talk about the creation process. Talk about how you use these tools and technology and came up with your design and, and you know, because this is really your differentiation, right? You're not creating a category, but you're innovating on a category and you're, you're building something. How did you get there? How, how does this work? How do you build a project from start to finish? With lots of patience and a lot of long nights and some beer. So everybody yeah, we have likes a lot. That. Everybody <laughs> likes that. Yeah, we have a bunch of very creative uh, people. And yeah, we started out really in meeting in breweries and just sketching out ideas and be very uh, innovative. We have a love for what we do. We all have a love and passion for the product and the industry we are in. We are connected by our roots from the automotive and aerospace. And that just makes the bunch of gearheads we are <laughs> as the creative idea lab we really are with RKS. So the creation process is, uh, I'm grateful and thankful that the team is not egocentric and, and focus on this is my idea and you can't build on my idea. So someone comes up with an idea and we all build on this idea and see, okay, what's the customer saying? What's, what are the dealers saying? What can we see as a trend? What do we know? Where do we want to improve? And then bringing it into a modern tour, which is lightweight and where it just enables us to bounce around new ideas without being bugged down by too many policies in a system where you can't be creative. So it, it's always a mixed bag of how creative can you be without bugging down the production process. And that ability is with the system there and I just love that. So having said that, I mean, everybody in the product development process knows if you are very creative, that translates into a SR change management process, <laughs> which needs to be robust enough. So all these ideas need to be embedded sometime in this guy in the production and you want to make sure that anything you want to change is then easily changed in a convenient way. And even that, again, the system enables me to say, hey, change management, one, two, three, four, four, five is coming down your way and just check it out and say something, right? So it's just a good tour all around for the gearheads we are. So, so curious, right? How long did it take to get that design through and how much do you think the technology and, 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 and running on 3D with this so shortens that cycle for creating products. And of course, I imagine you guys have dreams of new iterations and, and new products. That yeah, will come to follow. We, have, we have. So we started in October, like I said, 19. The first launch in the system was then in May. And now we are in production and we're going to launch this next model year very soon. So Shorten the time frame by, I know, about 40% easily. Testing, running all those tools we know from other industries with the CAE simulations, FEE, you name it. So it's just virtual product development, really, what it comes down to. I mean, even our industry needs to be smart in shortening the time to market process and the duration. So 40, 45% easy. That's notable, 40, 45%. Yeah time savings because there's so many other economics there there's the uh -huh. cost implications there's the getting to market faster uh and the yep. outcome that, that with that it's being more competitive it's being able to uh, get production moving know the parts you're going to need and right. of course during a supply chain shortage being able to address that sooner by having a better idea of yep. what you're going to need to ultimately take it to production right. later gives you a runway. It's kind of building a production home versus building a custom home, right? The, right. the people that build production, it creates all kinds of scale and economies of, of scale that you just can't get when it's custom. And that's why they're able to move so much faster. It's not right. usually because the product is, is, is a much lower quality. It's because 
they know what they need. So it sounds like you've really, you're maximizing the digital transformation and technology investments that you've made. So we have about a minute or yeah. two left. And what I love to right. hear from entrepreneurs like yourself uh, in these kinds of discussions is, you know, what happens next? So we talked a little bit about, you know, next model year, but entrepreneurs are always, you know, we're suffering by thinking about getting through the month, but at the same time, we're dreaming about thinking of what we're going to be in 10 years. So somewhere between now and then, what do you sort of see is happening for RKS? Well, this guy behind me, <laughs> the Purpose Trailer is going to get a really cool technology embedded very soon, and that's going to come next year. So from a software development perspective, there is uh, cool features in the works right now. And they're going to hit very soon. But also, uh, if you think about going off-roading or even with the RV, the last thing people like to do is just dumping the black waste tank, right? Nobody likes that. <laughs> it's stinky, it's yucky, it's just ugh. So we are working on a feature which will hit the market next year where you actually don't have to do that anymore. And this is one of the core investments from RKS perspective. We are working, we are utilizing the system. So having new technology going into the market, whatever it will be, off-roading, not off-roading, lightweight, it's always the same thing. Quality driven, craftsmanship, technology driven, and really thinking ahead for the customer and the industry. So to sum it up in a minute, <laughs> hopefully, that's Absolutely. where we're gonna go. <laughs> Absolutely, well, Elizabeth Gritch, I really appreciate you coming on with me, uh, joining me here at the 3D Experience Forum, sharing with us Thank you so what much. you're doing at RKS. And uh, I look forward to following the story and maybe seeing a few more of your, your vehicles on and off the road. That would be fantastic. <laughs>